Welcome, New Life family and friends. We are so glad that you've joined us this evening. For the next few weeks, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We have part of our staff here with us tonight, and the next week, we will have the other staff participate. We're going to be discussing different topics and concerns that we face during the coronavirus pandemic. And we want to encourage you and let you know that we are all human and have concerns about the future. The difference with us as Christians, though, is that we know who holds the future. We must turn to the Word of God for our comfort, peace, and direction. There are yard signs in our neighborhood that just say Psalm 91. I want to read this to you, Psalms 91, 1 through 7. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalk in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Since we are in the shelter in place, it's easy to watch news all day. But I ask you, are you going to believe what the news and man says, or are you going to believe the report of the Lord? So tonight we are going to be discussing different topics of concern during this time and crisis in our nation. Tonight we have Bishop Jim Penley, Pastor Onella, and Sister Vicki. So they are going to be sharing with us first Bishop Jim's topic that he's going to be discussing is on wisdom. All right, thank you, CJ. I'm, I'm so excited to be here tonight, and I just uh, want to say how much we love and appreciate you. We're thinking about you all the time, praying for you, and uh, we just can't wait to see you uh, again in person, and that day will come soon. Uh, but uh, today I wanted to talk to you about the subject of wisdom. Wisdom is so important in every area of our life, and that uh, when we have it, it's really a help to us. And so let me just get right into it. It's been said that wisdom is the ability to use knowledge and experience to make good decisions and good judgments. Wisdom is the ability to discern inner qualities and relationships. It is insight and good sense. And wisdom is critical, especially in this day and time that we're living right now, to make sure that we can make right decisions uh, with all of the issues that we're facing each day. And so I want to go back about uh, 30 years in my life. And uh, I was a, when I was a younger man, uh, I loved electronics. It was just, I just lived for it. And uh, I went to school uh, to learn, uh, learn electronics. And, and when I was in my mid-20s, I had the opportunity to purchase the inventory of a television repair shop and all of the equipment and inventory. And so I was like a kid in a candy store. I just loved it. And so I took all that stuff. I was the kid when, when I was young that wanted to take everything apart to figure out how it was working. And so, and so this just met, met with me, and, and so I was doing all that. And, of course, Robin didn't like it so much because I was spending all my time in the garage working on televisions and stereos and radios and all that stuff. But one of the things that I learned, knowledge, uh, in, in school was the first thing that you do when you're trying to repair something is you find the electrical diagram or the schematic. And so I would get that. Sometimes I would have to order it. Back in the day, when you bought a television, the schematic was actually inside of it. You took the back off, and there was a paper there, and you pulled it out, and it had the, the diagram of all the electrical components of that television. And so I would take that out, and I would, I would just begin searching the circuits. And I had equipment that would tell me uh, what the signal looked like, and I could trace it through transistors and resistors and, and all that and find out where it broke down, and then I would know what to do to fix it. So uh, being young at it, it took me a long time. Uh, it, it's several hours and sometimes days 
on a television to be able to repair it. But I had a friend in the business that um, he was uh, not like me, young and inexperienced. He was very experienced at being doing it a long time, and uh, he could f literally look at the television screen uh, and and be able to tell me um, he would know right where to go. So what would take me hours to figure out, he could figure out in minutes. And a lot of the steps that I would have to go through to find things and to be able to fix things, he could literally do in minutes. And so wisdom um, is what he had that I didn't have. I had knowledge, uh, you know, and, and knowledge is a good thing, but uh, knowledge is about learning, but wisdom comes from living. And he had lived the life of a television repairman, and so he knew things that I didn't know, and it was just, uh, it, it just made such an impact on me that I needed to, to be, begin to learn things so that I could move forward in my life, and it's very important for us today. Uh, you know, the world around us right now is going crazy. There's fear, and there's panic, and and uh, you know, I, I remember just a few weeks ago going to the store on a Tuesday night, and I said, what has happened you know, there's everything was gone, all the groceries and, and the toilet tissue. I'm like, what's wrong with people? Paper towels and toilet, everything's gone. Well, the reason that happened was people, instead of operating in wisdom, godly wisdom, they operated in fear. They operated in panic, and it caused them to make wrong decisions and do things. Uh, you know, right now you see on the television these people bringing buggies of toilet tissue and wanting to get a refund, and the managers are saying, nope, you bought it, it's yours. I'm, I don't want it back. Uh, but fear will cause you to, to make decisions that you wouldn't make uh, normally. And, you, you know, when I, when I look back again, thinking about my days in, in television repair, that broken TV screen is kind of like the world that's around us today. You know, the world leaders, they're looking at that metaphoric TV screen as it applies to their country and, and their state or their city or their county. And they're trying to make decisions um, based on a flawed system, a world system of wisdom. You see, there are two, two um, uh, parallel systems. There's a world system uh, of wisdom, and then there's a God wisdom. God, you see, uh, the, the cool thing about God is this day that we're in right now, as I'm sitting here talking to you, holding this microphone, God saw this day before this day was. God saw the day and time that we're in right now before it was even created. God knew the pandemic that we were going to be facing before the coronavirus was, before it was ever there. God in his wisdom knew. And God uh, works all things out to our benefit and in our favor. And so I can walk each day and not walk in fear, not walk in panic uh, like the world around me does. I can walk knowing that my Father goes before me. My God has already seen and He's already done. He's already set up situations that will work out for my good and in my favor. So wisdom is critical uh, that we be able to have it. Uh, you know, I, I think um, about wisdom, uh, and um, Brother Bond, one of the things that you said that stuck with me years ago was that every day you pray for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and favor. Well, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding are key components uh, to where we are right now. Having wisdom, and I, I kind of... Uh, Look at it like this. Knowledge is kind of like the maybe the, the who and the, and the what. And wisdom is the, is the where um, in, in things. And understanding is the why. And when you have all of those things working together in your life, you can make really, really good decisions. But you might say, Pastor Jim, um, what if I don't have enough wisdom? What do I do? Well, there's good news for you today. All you need to do is open the Word of God. And let me just read you a little bit. In Proverbs um, 4 and... Well, let me just say this first. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, though it cost you all you have. Get understanding. So the first part of wisdom is getting it. You know, get it. Reach out there and grab it. Find wisdom. But if, if you don't have wisdom, you don't have enough wisdom, don't know how to get it, Here's the, the cool part. In James 1 and 5, uh, James chapter 1, verse 5, uh, the Bible says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, <coughs> Excuse me, and it will be given 
to you. God has the wisdom that you need for this hour. God has the wisdom that you need for tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. If you will ask, you will receive. He's promised to give it to you, and he's not even going to find fault. He's not going to say you don't deserve it. He's going to say you're my daughter, you're my son. I've got this for you. Just ask. Proverbs 2 and 6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. We can grab a hold of that. When fear tries to come, when worry and doubt begins to come, you re grab a hold of that. He guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Proverbs 3 and 13 says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. Folks, it's really, really important that we operate in God's wisdom. God has wisdom for the hour. And if you'll ask him, He'll give it to you. God has wisdom for you today. All you need to do is ask to receive it. But wisdom <clears throat> lies not in just seeing things, but in seeing through things. You see, the world wisdom just sees things. God's wisdom sees through things. And we're able to call things that are not as though they are. And we can speak to the mountain and it'll be removed. Amen. That's God's wisdom. And I pray, listen, ask and you'll receive. Amen. Amen. Thank God. you, brother. Great word right now. That's what we need, godly wisdom. Right now we're going to let Pastor Onella share with us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor CJ. Uh, I just want to say for those of you all who saw the message with Pastor Bruce last week, I am still encouraged from that. And he told us that we would get to the other side. And I know we're in the middle of this, probably at the beginning of this, to be real. But when I was asked to exhort this evening, I was reminded of that message, and I began to meditate on what would the other side look like. Now, standing on this side, we don't know how long this virus is going to continue to disrupt our society. And when we get to the other side, because we will, because we believe the word of God, we don't know what that other side is going to look like. But we will get there, and we probably will not see this side of what we saw before COVID-19 again. But be encouraged, thanks to God. We're not gonna be spared from the effects of COVID-19. I'm just gonna tell you that, because we live in this world. The word of God said that the Lord reigns on the just and the unjust, so it's going to touch us. But I was reminded of St. Peter's 3 and 15, which reads, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, the context of this scripture was encouraging the church in the first century not to, uh, to give a reason for their hope when they were being persecuted by those people who despised them. Amen. And although COVID-19 is not first century church, it is something that's despising the people of God. It's attacking us. Praise God. And the thing about it, it doesn't discriminate against who it attacks. And the world is fearful. And many don't have hope. And that's where we as the church come into place. We have the hope. The first part of 1 Peter 3 and 15 tells us we need to sanctify the Lord in our hearts. In other words, we need to sell out to the Lord. We need to consecrate ourselves to him. And I can say, and I know you know, because here at New Life Worship Center, at the beginning of the year, you know, nothing is haphazard with us. God always knows what we need, and he prepares beforehand. And we walked into 2020 with a theme of elevate, elevating the word, elevating prayer, elevating worship. And we saw that here before we had to stay in place god was moving in this house we was getting good word and we were in, being encouraged to get in the word ourselves to dig in for ourselves and our prayer lives went up pastor bruce start 
Tuesday prayer. Sister Paula was heating it up in the, in, the, in the prayer room on Sunday mornings. Amen. People were coming out, and sometimes we would have up to 30 people here on Tuesday mornings. So we knew our prayer, and then the worship got good. Pastor Johnny and the worship team was leading us into the presence of the Lord every week. And then we had to stay at home. <laughs> but God didn't stop then. Amen. The word is still going forth. We're here uh, doing these recordings and live streaming so the people can still hear the word of God. Amen. So we know that that's what it takes. And God has equipped us with these tools that we will have what we needed in us during this time. So don't sit there and let the enemy steal what God has put in you because he has prepared us. All of this has added to our faith. So we don't have to be fearful. And the good thing about that, with no fear, amen, and let me get my page going here. Help me, help me, help me, Jesus. Amen. I probably don't even need these notes. But when we come in contact with the world on our jobs, in the stores, many of them are going to recognize that we're not demonstrating fear. We're not demonstrating anxiety. Amen. And some of them are going to ask us, why are we so calm? I sit at home right now, and, and I'll be praying. I said, now, God, I, I, I sh supposedly should be a little fretful and fearful of what's going on. But that hasn't been the thing in my heart. I, you know, I watch the news probably more than you all, praise God. And I'm, I'm a social studies teacher. I'm going to do that. But one of the things that the Lord has been showing me is that this is the end times. No, it's not the very end, so don't worry about you being raptured the next 10 minutes. But this is the season. We're seeing everything being lined up on a world scene. And so that's what I've been looking at. Yes, I'm looking at what's going on in the United States and in Texas and in Smith County and in Tyler. But I'm also looking at God is in control of this thing. This world has gotten to a point that I think he's been sitting up there saying, I don't have enough. Uh, I'm going to have to show people who is in control. And he let a little bitty virus that we cannot see come on the scene and wreak havoc all around the world. And we're going to be the one that God has prepared because we talked about revival at New Life Worship Center for years and years and years. But I believe God has been preparing this people in this house to be some of those who are going to make a difference in somebody's life as we go down the thing. And so we're going to have the opportunity when those come to us on our jobs and when they see us in, in, out there in, in, in the stores and so forth, and they're going to ask us about what we have. And I'm going to tell you, thanks to God, whether you know it or not, it's down in there. Pray go say it's in there. It's in you. If you've been coming to new life in any shape, form, or form, you know what God is saying. And we're going to be able to give the hope to those people out there. The bottom line, when we get to the other side, there's going to still be a world that needs to know Jesus. And I believe God has been preparing us for this end time revival. And I'm just asking us to let us get ready to tell people who he is, what he's doing in our lives, and what he can do for you. This virus will knock at our door in some form or fashion, but we don't have to open a door of fear because we have the hope that our God is walking through this entire situation, and we will come out victors. Everybody know I say life will go on. Amen. But our quality of life will depend on who we put our trust in. So remember, God, that we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us put our trust in him and know that this too shall pass, and we will get to the other side. God bless you. Oh, Nella, what a challenging word it is for us to, you know, let other people know that we are not fearful because we trust in God. Right now, Sister Vicki is going to share with us some ideas on how to uh, minister to children during this particular time. So, Sister Vicki, share with us what you have this morning. Hello, New Life, and we're so glad that you're tuning in tonight. And just as adults, this virus has not only turned us upside down but it has turned our families upside down our children our grandchildren uh, nieces nephews and we're all on the edge of this coronavirus and our daily lives have just been disruptive and 
We're not sure what tomorrow's going to bring. And for many of us, the nonstop news and social media coverage just doesn't help with anxiety and fear. <clears throat> Romans 8, 37 through 39 says, But in all these troubles, we have complete victory through God, who has shown his love for us. Yes, I am sure that nothing can separate us from God's love, not death, life, angels, or ruling spirits. I am sure that nothing now, nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above us or nothing below us, nothing in the whole created world will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that he has shown through Christ Jesus our Lord. That means nothing can separate us. This virus cannot separate us. And dealing with our own anxiety can be the most powerful way to make sure that our kids feel secure. When our kids see us anxious or fearful, they become anxious and fearful. So if you or your children are feeling worried and are learning how to deal with anxiety, in a healthy way, we can all get through this together. You're not alone. And even though your feelings are valid at this point, you cannot live your life on your feelings. You have to be able to push through that and see past that and understand that God's plan for you is much bigger than where you are right at this moment. So how do we stay calm? Be smart about what you're reading, about what you're watching on TV. Make sure that the information that you're getting is correct information. A lot of information that's out there is not correct. It is given to us in order to feed fear into us. So make sure that when you're watching TV or you're reading an article, the information that you are reading is true. Um, we also want to be thoughtful about what we're saying to others in our words. Um, if you're constantly negative and talking doom and gloom to somebody, before you know it, that person's going to start receiving that. And so we have to keep our words positive positive. We have to keep our emotions positive. We have to keep those things that we speak out of our mouth positive. Are we going to have bad days? Absolutely. We will have bad days. But like Sister Onella said, this too is going to pass, and we will get to the other side of this. Focus on what you're doing right now. Don't focus on what tomorrow's going to bring or the next day. Focus on where you are in the moment right now because, to be honest, none of us are promised a tomorrow. Um, it may not be the coronavirus that takes us out. So we have to live in the moment that we are right now and trust God for our tomorrow. Stop yourself if you notice that you're getting carried away with the what-ifs. We... As, as humans, we do that. Well, what if this happens? Well, what if that happens? Well, what if this? Don't live in the land of the what ifs. Don't get caught up in those things. God's already got that covered. He already knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He already knows what's going to happen next week. He already knows what's going to happen next year. None of this came as a surprise. Amen. You have to stop yourself when you start going to the land of the what ifs. And how do you help your kids through this time? Our kids have just been turned upside down. And to be honest, we've gone from not spending a lot of time with our kids, if we're honest with each other, to now spending too much time with our kids. And believe it or not, we're having to learn how to like each other again. <laughs> You love your kids, but they may not always like you, and you may not always like them. So we're having to learn how to deal and to compromise and to choose our battles in a way. 
But when kids are starting to feel anxious, it may not be as clear to you because kids feel anxiety in different ways than we do. Some of them are not verbal in how they, they tell you about their, their feelings. Um, some are reluctant to be separated from you. They don't want, they, they want to be right beside you all the time, that fear of separation. Um, some may say, my head hurts or my stomach hurts or that's uh, them showing signs of anxiety. They may be moody or irritable or more moody and irritable. They may have tantrums or meltdowns or trouble sleeping. So children show anxiety in different ways. Accurate information, a safe place to process feelings, and action plans are more important for your kids' mental health during this crisis. But they don't give the lasting hope or the supernatural peace that comes from trusting in Jesus. The coronavirus may seem big to your kids and even you at this moment, but nothing, nothing is more power, powerful than our eternal creator of the universe. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He is ever present in our time of trouble, and he leaves us with a gift, not the type of gift that the world gives, but a gift of unshakable peace of mind and heart. Structure your day. As parents, we often think, that setting boundaries for a child makes life easier. But the fact is our kids thrive on having those boundaries. It's easy for children to get bored or fretful if they're facing a day without structure and anxiety thrives under those circumstances. Help your child connect with God and internalize the truth of who he is and how much he loves them by memorizing scripture leading them in prayer, reading your Bible together, listening to praise and worship music. I have to tell you, my grandson will be two years old next month. And every Sunday since we have started this online, uh, online church, Azariah goes to his room. He hears the countdown, the music on the countdown, and he goes to his room and he picks up his little picture Bible because that's what he has and he comes into the living room, and he's ready for church. And he watches TV, and he lifts his hands, and he praises, and he worships to this. So if a two-year-old can praise and worship through this coronavirus, we can praise and worship through this coronavirus. So make sure that your days are structured when they're at home. Alternate their chores and their schoolwork. Don't overload them with all of these things that need to be done, take this time to enjoy your children. Enjoy that you have this time together because I don't know about you guys, but before this, our lives were living in such a fast pace it, between sports and, and, and school and extracurricular activities I, don't, I couldn't tell you the last time some families had sat down and actually had dinner together. And I think what's happened is God has said, we've got to get back to what matters the most. We've got to get back to the heart of where our worship is. And it's all about him. It's not about us. But we have to make sure that we're putting our families as a priority. And... I just made a little list of a few things that you can do that won't cost you a thing to do with your kids. Get into the Word. Right now is the perfect time for your children and yourself to start hiding these scriptures in your heart. Because in the future, something will happen that you will be able to recall those scriptures and it will give you peace. Pack a picnic, even if you're just going to the backyard. Pack a picnic. Get out. Enjoy. Play card games. Watch a movie. Sing karaoke. We did that the other night in the living room, and 
my father-in-law came over because he thought something was going on because it sounded <laughs> so bad. He said, I just heard a bunch of hollering and screaming and didn't know what was going on. Bake together. Cook together. Teach your ch- This is a time for you to be able to teach your children those basic necessity things that they need to know. Take pictures. Build a fort in the house. Play charades. Calm yourself. Don't share your worries with your children. And if you're feeling anxious, find a way to ground yourself. We are here and available to you by telephone, email, and we are more than happy when you feel anxious to pray for you. Look for the positive, and it's easy to focus on the negative things, but God has so much that he is doing for us, even in this time of uncertainty, and his eye is on each one of us. Take the extra time with your kids as a blessing. You may be tired. You may be worn out. You still may be working from home and doing all of the other things, but know that God still has his eye on you, and he will give you strength to continue to press through. And last, Romans 5, 3 through 5 says, And we are so happy with the troubles we have. Why are we happy with troubles? Because we know that these troubles make us more patient. And this patience is proof that we are strong. And this proof gives us hope. And this hope will never disappoint us. We know this because God has poured out his love to fill our hearts through the Holy Spirit that he gave us. Hold on to the hope. Amen. Amen. Sister Vicki, what a great word. Sometimes we forget about our children. We kind of just put them over to one side and say, oh, they're, they'll make it through. They'll make it through. But our children have been turned upside down, our children, our grandchildren. So please remember them in prayer as well as the teachers and all. It's, it's a different time, but life goes on, and we are going to make it to the other side. So right now we're going to have uh, Bishop Bond say a word to us and, and end our session in prayer. It's been a delight to be with you tonight, but I'm going to ask you to remember Psalm 91. Sister Bond opened it at the very beginning of the service, and how amazing uh, that uh, the Lord corresponds and coordinates everything, because this coming Sunday, I'm preaching on Psalm 91, and I'm going to be talking about shelter in place. Well, we have heard that name and that phrase for quite a few days and weeks and months now, but um, the Bible tells us in King James Version, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. However, the NIV, I love this, it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And uh, when I got to thinking about shelter in place, I, I knew I knew it from somewhere. Uh, I'm, I'm I, I guess I'm younger than I look, or older than I am, one or the other. But 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 we we got it. We go back to the days. How many of you remember? Some of you listening can remember the days when we were in school, and we had those school drills, and we had to go hide where, under the desk. Remember the 1960s, and some of you recall those signs that we had. They were a uh, rectangular side, and they had inverted diamonds, yellow and black in color, and they had uh, instructions because back then we were afraid of a nuclear war. We were afraid of Russia, Nikita Khrushchev. We were afraid of uh, the Cuba crisis, and JFK was the presidency. There was just a lot of things that were escalating. And I remember as a small boy walking down my little community of 6,000 in Carmel, Illinois, and here are these yellow and black signs saying shelter in place. And we would run. Actually, this would be under the um, city hall. They had a basement, and that was going to be the community shelter in place. Well, now we have another sign 
that is also out, and it is the same colors, shelter in place. But I want to tell you something. You need to tune in for sure this coming Sunday because as I preach on Psalm 91, we're going to find that there is really only one safe place to be sheltered and, and protected. And God's going to shelter us, protect us, and keep us safe. And we're going to pray that in closing, that God will keep you safe. He'll protect you. And again, like the Israelites, put the blood on the doorpost, put the blood over your family and over your life. And when that spirit, that coronavirus comes through, that virus has to pass on by because we are dwelling and resting in the secret place of the Most High. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that your Holy Spirit will touch us, guide us, and keep us safe. Father, every person connected to New Life Worship Center, I pray specifically for health and wholeness and protection to be upon them. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over their homes, over their businesses, over their jobs, over their finances. Father, keep their children safe. I pray in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Cause us, Lord, bring us, Lord, more close to you than we've ever been before. Thank you, Lord, that I feel a stirring of the Holy Spirit. And I believe revival is about to break loose, not only in East Texas, but I believe revival is about to break loose in this state and all through America. Revival is coming in these last of the last days. We praise you for it, Father, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen. God bless you. You have a good evening, and we'll see you Sunday at 1030. Thank you.